those two words are completely different, one physical, one completely abstract. Uh, what words do we use for, the, for one world and the other world? Do we use the same words or do we say, use different words? Theoretically, there are two possibilities. That is that we could use two different vocabularies for, or two completely different vocabularies, one for the mm, uh, physical world and different vocabulary for the uh, abstract phenomena, for the abstract world. But th this would require doubling or, or perhaps even tripling of vocabulary. Can you imagine that, for example, we uh, talk about thought in a completely different way than, for example, about chair? We know that chair differs from, thought, from a thought. That's quite obvious. But the question is uh, whether we use the same vocabulary or different vocabulary. Well, um, parrots are good for imitative, or are known for their imitative skills including the mimicry of human voice, that they readily they are able not only to mimic the human voice, but as you can to hear like every sound. This is also common knowledge, that's why they are used a lot in entertainment. Okay, let's, uh, let's start off with some animal sounds. Like in TV shows. First, can you do... Oh, that's <laughs> really gross. Let's do a wolf. <laughs> Good. How about a bird? Can you do a bird? Good. Can you do an owl? Good owl. How about a rooster? <laughs> How about a penguin? Can you do a penguin? <laughs> a little bitty penguin for you. How about a chimpanzee? <laughs> Good job, Einstein. Can you do a pig? Another example, if you ask for the way, if a man asks for the way or a woman asks the way, um, for example, how to, how to get to the post office? How, can you tell me how we can get to the nearest post office? A, man, um, a woman or a man would say, well, you have to drive uh, 500 meters ahead, then you turn left, you, you drive along uh, for another 200 meters, and the post office will be on your left. A woman would never say so. A woman would say, you have to drive straight on until you see this lovely boutique on the corner. <laughs> then you turn right along a narrow path with these beautiful uh, cedar trees. And there's going to be this little church, very peculiar point, and opposite the church you find the post office. Let me quote what he says about freedom, or political freedom. The essence of political freedom is the absence of coercion of one man by his fellow man. The fundamental danger to political freedom is the concentration of power. The existence of a large measure of power in the hands of a relatively few individuals enables them to use it to coerce their fellow men. Preservation of freedom requires either the elimination of power when that is possible, or its dispersal, where it cannot be eliminated. And I would say that, well, this is, from my point of view, in my opinion, this is one of the most fundamental concepts that is, well, not noticed very, very often in the world, in the society. So who is this true author? We can, Arthur, we can say that he, he was a Celtic warrior, um, first the warrior, and maybe after the Battle of Baden, he became a king. And here on purpose, I, I, I call him a British king, not the British king or British king, because probably there were other kings, um, because um, Britain was not a socialized country as it is today. Um, but he, is, he was the one who managed to unite those um, tribes of, of British origin or of Celtic origin. And uh, this is a, this is probably what we know. All other uh, facts, uh, or facts in the version of Comas are only um, speculations, so to speak, maybe not um, um, 
100% true historical facts. Uh, what we made of these 500 borrowings, so it is estimated that uh, between 400 and uh, 450 new words entered the language, and of these, uh, probably one-fourth remained today. So we were probably still using about 100 to 150 of the words that were borrowed at the time from uh, Latin. Uh, some words changed their meaning. Uh, noon comes from nona, which is a prayer in nine. Uh, and uh, nine was then noon because they counted the time differently. Uh, and um, cleric uh, changed to clerk. And today clerk is not no longer a religious person. It's a, it's a junior official sort of thing. So the meaning oh, changed. Okay. Question is, who cares? Why? Why bother? What, what's it matter? After all, everyone's theoretically equal. You can get in trouble. Ooh, a college professor who would use the N-word. Sorry, pan professor Zvichayne who will lose his job. <laughs> so, uh -huh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, ooh, film representations of this. There was, uh, based on a novel by Philip Roth, uh, the human stain on oh, ostensibly white professor gets in trouble for using a term spook which normally means ghost but it can also mean something like the n-word and he's in huge trouble until he finally comes out and says okay what's the big deal I'm actually a black man I've just been living my life and everyone thinking I'm white but in fact I'm black whoa Entirely possible, because perception, as you pointed out, is exactly the important thing. Okay? Here, the perception and the experience is the key thing. The election of a new Lord Mayor of London has been celebrated by a pageant known as the Lord Mayor's Show. This is held every year on the 9th of November, when the new Lord Mayor rides through the streets in his splendid coach drawn by six horses. In the 13th century, after the citizens of London had chosen a new mayor, they had to go with him to the King's Palace in Westminster and ask the King to approve their choice. During the centuries since then, 
the new Lord Mayor has gone to Westminster by boat on the Thames, but on horseback or by coach. Today, the procession starts in the city and goes past St. Paul's Cathedral as far as the boundary of the city of Westminster. It crosses the boundary and stops at the law courts where the Lord Mayor is presented to the Lord Chief Justice. The Mayor makes a solemn promise to carry out his duties faithfully, and the Lord Chief Justice hands the Mayor his sword of office. The procession continues to Westminster and then returns to the Mansion House.